Now, you may not always have the extruder readily available, and that's okay. You can still um, create handles. I actually prefer creating my handles by hand. I feel like it just gives it a little bit more of a homemade touch, and then I actually find that the handles crack a little bit less when you work with them by hand. So the first one is a coil handle. So I'm gonna roll a nice coil. I don't want it to be too thin, because if you look, my, my mug here is kind of big. So I don't want a super thin handle because it needs to hold up my mug once it's fired. Um, once you put your, mug, your handle on your clay mug, before it's fired, you should never pick up your mug by the handle until it's bisque-ware. Um, that's kind of just my rule of thumb. I don't ever like to do that uh, because what happens is if you're handling it by the handle, it just doesn't really work out. All right, so the first thing is the coil. Um, it's just a really general coil um, and I don't need a whole ton of it. I'm probably gonna cut it in half actually. Here we go. And before I do anything with this, I can't just stick it to my mug. So if I'm like, you know, I don't really know what I want to do with it yet. I'll probably do some decorative textures, but it, it can be just a coil. And I, I want it to just be a very basic round coil. Um, totally fine. But what you're going to need to do before you do anything with it is you're going to need to set it up um, to be kind of formed. So the first thing you'll do is you'll actually take a cup and you're gonna, you can take a small cup if you want your handle to be really small um, or a large cup if you want a really wide handle if you've got big hands. Um, so you're gonna take it and you're gonna sort of gently wrap it around. Um, if you're finding that it's starting to crack a little bit, you can just take a tiny bit of water and your sponge and just smooth it out. And you're gonna let it sit like that um, for probably a, a, about 15 to 20 minutes. And you just want it to sort of air dry like that. Let it rest there. Uh, the next sort of handle is going to be an altered coil handle. So I'm gonna take my coil handle here. And I'm gonna do some altering to it. So the first thing I wanna do is I like to have a sort of flat inside of the handle it, it just is a little bit more comfortable for me so what I'm gonna do with this clay now this out of the way, um, I'm going to actually tap it a little bit and I want it to be nice and flat on one side. So I'm just tapping it on one side. If I don't want it to get crazy long, I can kind of condense my clay a little. A lot more of your sculpting can happen once your clay is leather hard as well. You just can't put leather hard handles onto your artwork. All right, so that's my flat bottom coil. Now, if I want to do some more work to it, um, you can get this sort of effect here. Oh no. You can get this sort of bumped effect here by hand just by taking, dropped a coil. There we go. Uh, just by taking a pencil, and you're gonna wanna make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want it to get anything on your clay, I'm gonna clean it off real quick. But you want it, you can take a round pencil here and you can actually roll it into your clay and gently press down. And what it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you these sort of imprints into your clay. This was probably one of my favorite ways to build handles in college. And then I would smooth it out with my finger then I would flip it to the other side and do the same thing. And I 
might just keep checking around it and imprinting more in some places if I need to. And now I've got this sort of bumpy, sort of three column handle. All right. Uh, it's a little bit more organic than the one that came out of the kiln or out of the extruder, but I actually like it better. I think it usually, it, the more organic your handles are, the more comfortable they tend to be on the cup. So uh, I'm gonna cut at an angle. And remember that when slipping and scoring, especially with coils, um, you're gonna wanna cut at a sort of angle to give you more um, surface area for slipping and scoring. So. When I show you how to attach them, um, the way I'm cutting this will make a lot more sense. And then I'm gonna wrap it around my cup here right next to my other handle. The clay you use for your handle, because it has to do a good amount of stretching, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's nice and plastic. If it's starting to get kind of um, cracky, you're gonna to want to stick it in a bag with a little bit of water and squish it around and let it sit for about a weekend. And that will help. Get your clay back. All right, so that is one sort of altered mug handle. Um, another one is going to be through a slab. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of clay and I'm rolling it into a slab. I'm gonna keep it a little bit thicker because I have a big mug. over get the other side and you can really play around with these slab built ones because you just have you can do a lot more shaping so what I might do here with my slab is I might draw some scallops in should be enough and then I'll cut them out with my clay knife um, one thing if you're doing this sort of technique you're gonna want to make sure that your coil or that your slab is thick enough um, to hold up as a handle I've got this sort of handle here. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna round the corners. You don't really want anything too sharp or as really as flat. So if you round the corners, you can make it really comfortable for yourself. After I round all the corners for this, what I'll end up doing is I'll end up wrapping it around another cup and letting it sit so that it can wait for me to fire it. Uh, this creates, anything flat creates a really great canvas for scraffito um, or uh, other decorative techniques. All right, the next handle we're gonna look at is a sort of braided handle. Uh, so you're gonna take two coils that are about the same size, and the first thing you're gonna do is connect them now I slipped and scored these together first, uh, but I'm connecting them into kind of the top part of what my handle will be. 
And then what you do is you start to twist them around each other. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that they're blended really nicely up top and that it's nice and strong. If you twist your handle too tight, it might crack. After each twist, I wanna make sure things stay together. And I'm applying light pressure to my handle as I go. All right, so once I've got it to kind of where I want, then I'm going to slip it and score it again where they meet, so where that bottom will be. slipping and scoring it down there and then I might bring this over one more time just to give me an extra sort of um on the edge here then I can cut it off Blend it at the bottom, make it nice and make it nice and pretty. And now I can smooth it out, stick it on my green cup, um, and keep making handles. So that is a twisted handle. If you like to braid, you can take three strands and make a. The last handle we'll talk about is just a really simple pinch handle. Um, pinching, I would start with a coil no matter what, so you can make sure that the Thickness is what you're looking for. There we go. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna give it a more organic look. So I'm just gonna start to pinch it. And you'll have this sort of hammered look to it. Or it'll look like a little bit like hammered metal. And I do like pinch mug or pinch Handles, I think that they give you a really organic feel and they feel really nice in your hands when you're holding mugs. So I'm just kind of dispersing pressure all the way around. Smoothing out any cracks. The bottom is also textured because as I'm pinching, I'm pinching both sides. And that is a textured handle.